This is the Mental Metal Podcast, and I am your host, Coach Matt Toman. I'm a former athlete, teacher, coach, and athletic director that switched careers after surviving cancer and a stroke in the fall of 2020. But I'm also a dad of a son and a daughter that were successful high school athletes that went on to college. Now I use that experience along with my ICF coaching certification when helping teams, coaches, and athletes from all over the country. Each week, I will pose a specific question that will help coaches of all types better understand mental toughness. In the Mental Metal Podcast, coaches will learn to help their athletes overcome adversity without being the adversity they need to overcome. In life, we have to take things that happen and think of them as things that happen to us and turn them into things that happen for us. That's an idea that I preach, that I try to exemplify. Uh, I'm in a business now helping people as a result of some serious health issues that I had. So I love to say that, you know, I'm able to take something that happened to me and turn it into something that happened for me. And I know that anytime that we do some wordplay with that or have an idea. There's always extreme examples that test that, right? And my guest today is an extreme example of a terrible thing happening and how he's trying to turn it into something, not necessarily that happened to something for him, but definitely trying to take the positives out of it. And I say it's an extreme Example because I'm talking to a guy in this episode that lost his son last year. Um, his name is Dylan ba- Darren Basil, and he was a long, he was a coach of Prairie Central High School for years. Uh, Prairie Central is a very storied uh, small school basketball program in Central Illinois, and his son uh, Dylan uh, played for him. He has two sons, Dylan and Trey, and. Dylan and a former teammate this time last year were on spring break out in Colorado doing some sledding and had a uh, tragic accident and and it killed both boys and both were, you know, teammates at Prairie Central. Dad was the coach. Basketball had just ended. They'd had a really good run. They were actually ranked first in state that year for a while and had a really good team. and. just a tragic, heartbreaking story. And just a couple of months ago, I had seen Coach Basil had shown up and, and spoke to a couple schools uh, just about Dylan's life, what he stood for. And I could see that he was trying to process the situation. It was clearly therapeutic for him to go and talk to these schools, tell about Dylan, tell that story. And like I said, try to find the positive in it. Try to find how it worked for him, even though it was a terrible, tragic thing, trying to find the positive in it and how he could honor Dylan and Drew and their and their lives. And so having having a platform in the Mental Metal Podcast, albeit a small one, uh, I, I had contacts and and got a hold of coach basil and just offered to him my platform and said hey if you want to tell that story uh for your own benefit for your own therapy and also honor the boys and tell you know what they stood for and help others i'm here if you need me we had a conversation and he said yeah i think i'd like to and the way i operate when I set somebody up to go on the podcast, I, I just send them my calendar link and show them the days that I have open. And I say, hey, here's here's the days I have open. Pick a time that works for you. And we'll record the podcast. And Darren said, yeah, I'll check my calendar and get back to you. And it wasn't until the morning that I was scheduling the podcast And getting ready to do it, that I'm looking back at some old articles that I realized Coach Basil had chosen 
March 19th to record the podcast. And March 19th, 2024 is the one year anniversary of that tragic accident. Obviously, he was aware of it. Obviously, he was doing it on purpose. And obviously, he felt like it was the best way to honor him and to help himself. What you're going to listen to on the podcast here is a little bit of that story, what those boys stood for. But you're also going to see some some raw emotion here with Coach Basil and him processing some stuff and trying to help others with some of the rules that Dylan lived by, some of the faith that Coach Basil has, some of the family, the faith the family has, and some of the faith that Dylan has, and trying to, again, make the positive, find the positives in such a terrible situation. So it's a tough interview, but it's a, it is such a good example of, we have two options in life when things happen. We can find the positives or we can dwell on the negatives. And those negatives can be so hard, can be so difficult. And they're still really raw and always will be for Coach Basil and their family. But despite that, he's finding the positives and finding ways that he can share that story to help others. And that, I commend him for coming on. And that right there is, is, it's worth a listen to listen to everything that he has to say in, in, in what's a terror and what's a tough interview. So stick around. I'll talk about it a little bit afterwards, but listen to the interview with coach Basil and, and how to learn how to take things that happen to us and turn it into things that happen for us. Parents of athletes know that confidence and belief are fundamental for success. We want them to play without fear and without anxiety, but once those negative thoughts take over, it can derail years of work. Turning that anxiety into belief is similar to building strength and speed. It just takes intentional effort over time. Mental Metal Coaching provides the individual drills needed to build the positive mindset necessary for success on the court and in life. Contact today to schedule a free coaching session and start building mental toughness in your athlete. And welcome back to the Mental Metal Podcast. I'm here with my guest today, Darren Basil. And Darren, I'm extremely I want to commend him for coming on. It's going to be a, a tougher a, a tougher interview and a tougher podcast than I usually do. And and uh, part of that is because the, the topic today is we're really going to talk about how how to be able to learn to to find things that happen to us and help them turn into things that happen for us and how we take life's, you know, turns and, and all these mishaps and things that happen and, and how to find uh, the good in it, if that's the way we want to put it and, and how to use it. And, uh, and Darren, Darren's story is uh, going to be one that's, it's, it's heart wrenching, but he's trying to make the best out of it. And I wanted to give him the opportunity to tell this story, talk about it, and and ultimately to help others. And I think that Darren has started to do that. I asked him to come on, and because I started to see he was working with the Peoria Notre Dame team, girls team, uh, just won a state championship, and wanted to tell that story a little bit and help. And and uh, and coach, uh, just first and foremost, thank you, thank you for coming on. And uh, I'd love to start with. Just some of your background in basketball and playing and coaching and and uh, whatever you want to tell us. All right, well, thanks for having me on, Matt. I appreciate it. So, um, I'll just say, you know, today's a today's a difficult day for me. Today's the one year anniversary date of Dylan's death, and when I scheduled this, I thought, what a good time to do it, maybe um, to honor him good way for me to honor him and drew uh, his best friend drew who passed away on the same same day same accident um so that's that's on my heart today um but we'll coach start the amount me. the amount of strength that it's got to take to do that and i when i saw that you scheduled it for this date i knew it had to be on purpose and i thought man i i want to 
I want to honor the your I want to honor you and those kids as much as we can. So again, I commend you for coming on today. Well, thank you. I, a lot of people have said you're the strongest person I know, or you're so strong. That's the actually first thing from the truth. I I I don't feel that way. My, my wife is extremely strong. She's an amazing woman. I wish I could be as strong as as her. Um, I like to say I don't I don't have a choice. To be any different, I mean, what what are my options? I yeah, you know, God didn't give me an option on whether I can be strong or, or not. I I have to get up every day and ride for my family and be a dad, and be a husband, and be a friend. And I own my own business. I got to be a boss. I got to the people that depend on me here. And so I don't really have an option in, in that. And you know, back to uh, what you started talking about, like things happen to you, but maybe they really happen for you. And so I go back to the beginning of when I playing basketball in high school. We we had a pretty good team throughout junior high and in freshman, sophomore group. Um, and then we had a new coach come in, uh, Charlie Strasberger, when I was a junior, and his stepson, Gary Tidwell, uh, came with him. Gary was a all state, two year all state player, and we had very, very uh, high success. Those my junior senior year, we went third in state and second in state back to back years, and in those uh, two years, we lost three games. One was an overtime game in regular season against a really good the Clifton Central team, and the other two were down at the state tournament in Assembly Hall. Uh, we lost to the Eventual champions, Carlisle, when I was a junior in overtime. Um, they had Tommy Michael. I think he had 45 or something like that against us. Yeah. Um, and then we lost when I was a senior. We lost in double overtime in the championship game to Trenton Westland. And that's kind of the beginning of my my story. Um, I, had, I had hit a game-winning shot in the semifinals uh, to, to help get us to the championship game and then in the championship game I had a a one-on-one situation with a half a second left in the first overtime and I I missed the the front end and the score was tied and uh, that kind of haunted me for a while and and it was it was tough Um, that and what you just described yeah and what you just described there if I can jump in it's like from one game to the next, it was probably your best moment and then your worst moment all like, especially at that age, right? Like it was that yeah. your best, your best sports moment was one game. And then the very next game, it's, it's the worst. And they're, they're like booking they're they're within one game of each other. Exactly. And so, um, I had, you know, a couple pictures here I was going to share with you. So this was, uh, this is a picture of my high school coach hugging me after the game, the medal ceremony. And um, so we'll get back to this later. But this was this was after the the overtime loss where I missed missed the free throw. And so, we'll, like I said, we'll get to something else later that uh, goes with that. But um, yeah, you know that was that was a, a tough moment for a. 17, 18 year old kid oh. to kind of handle that. You know, you can't blame yourself. And, you, you know, everyone's so nice about, about things because everyone knows it wasn't it wasn't that free throw that cost us. But, you know, I make that. We, we win the state championship. And who knows where, what changes in, in my life at that point, you know? Um, I was on the border of, of whether I wanted to play college basketball or not at the time. And, um, and I don't know if that, made me a decision not to play but it, but um i decided not to at any point anyway yeah and you know throughout my life a lot of people have <laughs> commented on those free throws and it's all in good fun and we joke and we have a good time but it's part of part of my who i am and, and everything and you know what my boys that they, they, i've told trey and dylan about about that experience and you know just it was just a free throw at this point when I'm 52 years old. But sure, you know when you, when you're immersing it and that's all you you care about, it's it's a big it's a big deal. And 
Well, but the, the think about the empathy. The empathy it has to give had to give you as a coach, right? Like when a kid yeah. misses a shot or has a turnover in him, like I, it probably made you a better coach having missed that free throw than if you had made the free throw. Probably so, yeah. It, it, and I'd go beyond that. It, it probably made me a better person. Yeah, you know, you, you had said what the things happened to you or for you, and that's something that happened happened for me. We can look back later in my life and say, yeah, that was a great learning experience. You know, the to, to to come back and just even playing. I played football and basketball, and 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 I know your your podcast is about you know mental health, mental training, yeah. you know, mental toughness. And I grew up in a fairly big family, a couple older brothers, and a lot of cousins and you know it was just always a competitive kind of atmosphere and, and i think that gave me my mental toughness over over anything and i don't know if i know how to coach mental toughness or not but i think i know what it looks like um, i think that's huge that was yeah, at least you, at least you have to know what the target is right 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 yeah 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 so i agree you know, getting through that getting over that would allow me to to then i think maybe relate to my players down down the road and, and my sons for that matter. Um, so that's kind of the background of, of, of me and playing basketball and then uh, playing days are over, right? You yeah. go to college, you have fun, you play pickup games, have, have a lot of fun with doing that for five, six, seven years or something like that. Um, and then get married, have kids, have a job, Start coaching them in all the youth things: t-ball, baseball, basketball, football. You know, we we did we did it all, and and I was able and blessed to be able to to be there and and do that with my kids. And it's it's uh, those are memories that I cherish. And it's, oh. um, yeah, I yeah I can't are, imagine. I mean, I I can't imagine, uh, but I can't imagine as well. Like it's 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 got to be those memories are definitely pre have to be precious for you. Yes, even even more so than what they already would have been, you know. Now, yeah, the, going through all I have left of Dylan is the memories and and that. So, and, and that's and and that's absolutely true. But then I also know that you you have that story, and that's what and that's what you're you're sharing. I know I mentioned how you're sharing it with some other teams and how you're sharing that you know, his rules and his ideas and, and how he played and, and how to be a good teammate. So I, I know that team that, that memories are all you have, but then you also have, you have this, you know, to honor yes. him. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of keep it alive and, and keep honoring him and, and what he stood for. And, you know, I'll just talk a little bit about, you know, Dylan was a skinny kid, always, he was just so active and he was skinny, but he, he, uh, was such an athletic kid and he worked so hard to try to be, a, to live up and be as good as his older brother. I mean, he really looked up to Trey. I remember yeah. an interview he did with Jim Matson. Um, you know, he just mentioned, um, how, uh, how much he looked up to Trey and that Trey was the best player he ever played against. And I remember at the end of that, he's like, he's like, uh, I'm not sure if Trey will say the same thing. Um, but, you know, I, I think we were getting to that point where they were getting pretty close in, in, in ability and, and everything yeah. to each other. They were, they were different players, uh, different strengths. Um, well, as, as an older brother, I can tell you that we, we never, we never let, you know, we never, that. yeah, you know, well, you know, you said you grew up with cousins and, and you know yeah. what I mean? You you never, you never accept that or you never let them think that. So one of the, one of the last, uh, last conversations that Dylan and Trey had, we were, we were down in our basement and talking and uh, my assistant coach, Trevin McCullough, was down there with us at the time and and they're going back and forth about who's who beat each other in one-on-one -on -one contest yeah. and it was it was dark out so we weren't that wasn't happening but <laughs> i know they were both kind of look, looking forward and licking their chops trying wanting to get at each other and see who 
who who would win yeah. the contest? And of course, Trey's like, oh, no way, I'll whip you. And Dylan's like, I don't know, I don't know. I think I can take you. And you know, it was a that was a special conversation that I remember. Absolutely, just a few days before. Yeah, before everything. And, and and the fun of that is both knowing that, and especially with you, just knowing that they're both they're both they're both pretty good at basketball, and both you know what I mean, like they're. They're both and really we're split and we're splitting hairs, right? Right. Yeah. They both have some unbelievable accomplishments. Um I have that pictures of some of those of those things if you want me to share that. Absolutely. I'd love to I'd love to I'd love to use this time to to honor Dylan here and as you tell his story because I think it gives I know what you're going to talk about with with Dylan and his and his rules for teammates and and how he lived and how he played and I think that it helps the story knowing that, oh, by the way, he was also really good at basketball, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it, it just helps the story, right? And, oh, my goodness, coach. And and for those of you listening, if uh, he's he's pulled up some stuff on on uh, on the screen here. And if you want to go to the YouTube link and, and check it out. But it's just, I mean, it's, it's is, the. Um, yeah, this is trade. My, my oldest son Trey, his, yeah. his his set of accomplishments, you know, he's all tournament, and he 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 played and started for me as a sophomore, and, and I, I will talk a little bit about about that and the growth of that and, and how that affected Dylan. Absolutely. Um, so he was he was all tournament team as a sophomore, junior, senior at, at our Thanksgiving tournament, our uh, holiday tournament. He was. Uh, all conference first team for three years, uh, News Gazette first team, um, our second team in nineteen, and then first team, team in first team in both uh, twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one, Panagraph all area first team, our team MVP three years. Uh, we have a, a award we call the Warrior Award, which is uh, basically uh, goes to the guy that <clears throat> does anything and everything. Whatever is asked of them to win the games, whether it's taking charge, guarding their best guy, diving on the floor, um, just just a guy that makes the winning plays of, of what it takes to to win win games, and, and a lot of that yeah. is the toughness plays and, and things that are needed. Um, and our our coach this year renamed that award, uh, the Dylan Bazell Warrior Award. Yeah. So uh, next week we have our awards banquet. <clears throat> and someone will will earn that for the first time, so that'll be kind of an emotional thing. Yeah, I so I remember seeing. Yeah, I remember seeing Trey play. Uh, we, you know, when my son was at DMAC, and we, yeah. we would be at the Williamsville tournament, and I can remember as Trey as a sophomore, I was watching him light somebody light somebody up. I'm like, man, this kid's ath- athletic and 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 really good. So I can remember yeah. watching him play. Yeah. 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 He was, he was super good. I mean, now he, now Trey is it. Novel mentions and stuff, you know, yeah. Now Trey's at didn't score here at PC. And, and Trey's at Illinois Wesleyan now, right? Trey's at Illinois Wesleyan now just finished yeah. his junior year and uh, was getting quite a bit of playing time around 20 minutes a game. Um, so he's they're they're expecting and looking forward to a successful senior year. They got a really good group of juniors and I think they'll be really good next year. Yeah. No, that's that's cool. And that's yeah. It's a great Illinois Wesleyan's it's a great program and shows you that like like he probably had to get in there with even with all those acc- accolades, he had to get in there and work for to sure. get his spot yeah. there, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so this and is then, Dylan's stuff you've got here so up on the on the screen stuff, now. Yeah. And he did play. Uh, he dressed as a sophomore. That was a, uh, of course, the dismal COVID year that we played fifteen yeah. games. But he did dress some varsity, and he, and he got he was uh, you know first set guy off the bench. Uh, different, different time. I think it would have been we would have as a coaching staff we would have handled it differently. We would have played these hey. future guys a little more. But <laughs> oh, it was COVID. We had yeah, a senior heavy yeah. class, and we had one junior on the team is all. And so we thought as coaching staff, we're just going to let these seniors, this is all they got. We're going to let them play. 
and you know when they got tired we put guys in so you know that that's kind of was our motto that year and we did so we didn't get to develop the young guys hey, we, as much as we yeah. would have in a normal year we were just happy to be playing and that's that year that's exactly right yeah happy yeah playing. they got to play together on the same court same time oh which is a neat thing good good memory to have there <clears throat> but uh you know dylan too had a great great career thousand point score all tournament teams and everyone he's ever played in is the HOI player of the week. I remember Jim Madsen interviewing him and, and uh, Jim told me he was in, almost embarrassed to win the award. I'm talking about Dylan was almost embarrassed to win the award. Like yeah. all he could kept doing is reflecting the praise on his teammates and everything. Yeah. And that's the kind of kid he was. He was just, he was humble and he knew, he knew he was, he knew he was good. He had confidence, but he he liked to deflect everything back on his team and teammates. And, and man, that's a something you don't you don't see or or hear of anymore. It just doesn't happen hardly ever. And no, and it's it's so amazing yeah, it's, watching Maya Wardle, and and she was just like that. Yeah, lots of similarities there. Yeah, and and coach, I'm gonna throw it on you here and say that's, you know, kids don't, the reason you don't see a lot of kids like that is they just don't get brought up like that. And it's, it's a commendable job you did, you know, raising, raising your athlete, raising your boys, raising that way. It doesn't happen by accident. You're probably right. I'll give credit <laughs> to their mother. She was. Well, see, sweet. there you go. And now I know where Dylan got it. He, he's taking that credit. You're taking that credit and you're putting it out on somebody else, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, their, their mother, Lynette, my wife is, is amazing. And, and I know we're going to talk about faith and, and all that too. in this, and, you know, her, I grew up in an apostolic Christian home. And so we were, you know, church every Sunday and we didn't have a TV growing up. I remember my dad joined the church when I was I don't know, early, early junior high age. And, um, but my mom, as far as I remember her, was always a member of the Apostolic Christian Church. But when I was raising boys, Lynette was always the one that was like, say your prayers and read the Bible stories to him every night. And and even even up until the, you know, till Dylan's death and er everything between when they were boys and now and, and even to Trey, she, anything that's bothering them or coming up, for them, whether like for Trey, whether it be test or whatever, or, or you know, things aren't going great and on the basketball court, she's like, just pray about it, pray about it, and, and that's that was yeah. always her thing is is pray about it, and she really instilled that in them, and I give her the credit for for the faith that they they both have. She, she yeah. really uh, made it. Uh, <clears throat> Now I remember you telling me this. I remember you telling me the story about there was a game where you were talking about, and you found out later that Dylan had been praying before the game. Yeah, so he had shared this with my my mom. It was when he was a junior, we were playing the regional championship game against Monticello. and Monticello went on to get second in the state that year. Man, we had him down. We we were leading the whole game to the last 10 seconds of regulation and they hit a shot to, to tie it. But he had told my mom that during the national anthem, you always say a little prayer and his prayer that game was, was something to the effect. And I'd have to, I need to ask her again, exact words, but it was the effect of, of Jesus. Look, if um, I'd rather, I'd rather lose and be humble than, win and be proud so if if we don't win this game something about if something to the effect of uh man i wish i would have asked my mom before i got on oh here. but i mean you can, you can edit something i, I out, get it please. though and and the amount of the amount of maturity it takes to prayer i mean like the, the amount of maturity it took to 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 pray that before a, a game as a what a 17 year old, 18 year old, whatever it was like, that's, 
it's that's tough as the coach. You know, yeah, the years that I coach, that you coach. Help me to be humble, and if yeah, and if I if I if we lose, I'd, I'd rather be humble and lose than to be proud and win. And that and, was kind of his prayer. And uh, if so. and just so we know, like at the point where you guys rank number one in the state. And as a junior, we were ranked, but not. Oh, that was the junior. Year. Okay. Junior. Yeah. Okay. But he was he was the best player on the court that night. He fouled out late, and that that didn't that didn't help us. But um, another one of those things that happened to him, that happened for him, that made him have even more drive. And then after that is when he came up with his list of what it takes to what it takes to win, basically. No amount of athletic talent or physical ability can overcome a poor mindset. Anxiety, fear, and negativity will always diminish an athlete's abilities and limit their success. If you're not intentionally developing your child's mental toughness, then they are not reaching their full potential. Mental Mental Coaching provides the individual drills needed to build the positive mindset necessary for success on the court and in life. Contact today to schedule a free coaching session and start building mental toughness in your athlete. You can't make chicken salad out of chicken feathers, or perhaps you've heard it or even said the other version. Regardless, good coaches should not blame a lack of success on the players they get to coach. It's a lame excuse, and I'm sorry if that ruffles your feathers. But it's your job as a coach to develop your players. If your athletes lack skill or mental toughness, it's your responsibility to develop it. But how do you make today's athlete tougher without risking breaking them? Well, Mental Mental Coaching now offers professional development for coaches explaining how to do just that. The program is called Ember to Inferno, Building Mentally Tough Athletes. It teaches real tools and tangible methods that are proven to increase the mental health and toughness of athletes. The program is available as an in-person seminar or as virtual small group coaching. Don't wish for mentally tough athletes. Build them. Contact Mental Metal Coaching today. What it takes to be a good teammate. Talk to me about that because I know that you you had that. Where did you where did he have that list and how did you come across it and and tell me about it? He had it in um, he had it in a uh, journal of his and. Um, he had shared it with the, one of the assistant coaches and we I didn't even see it until after he had passed away I didn't, I didn't know about it and um, it's something that we've shared with our, our guys our team um and I shared it with with the girls team, and I'll pull it up here. Oh, I would I would love to, and thank you for sharing it. That's such a oh, it's it's a very personal thing. But this is also like you said that this is the what you want to share from him, right? That that thing that we want to. Oh, so this is yeah. This is, this is his list he came up with. What does it take was what he had it labeled as. So some of these are things that you hear a lot. Well, let's like, let's just run. Like if you don't mind, let's just let's just run the uh, let's run it down it. All right. So number one, go one hundred ten percent all the times, and and part of that was he he did that in preparation for the games, not not just in the games, and that's been something I've talked about with with our players and other other teams like he he embraced the preparation part of it um and it goes back to he wanted to he wanted to live up to his to his brother's standard that he kind of put out there and, and he wanted to do it for himself he wanted to get he wanted to be better and uh he did it because he wanted to win and he wanted to yeah. win for his teammates and uh, that was so important for him to, he, he was, he loved Prairie Central. He loved the Hawks. And that was yeah. something that him and Drew both said all the time, multiple times to their team. And that was in football, that was in basketball, that was in track. Um, they always would say, we love the Hawks. And yeah. they, they took pride in playing for their school and 
and they love playing for their teammates. Let me, let me, um, if you don't mind, can I, can I re- read this just so yes. that everybody, everybody listening can hear it? Uh, so here's his, here's Dylan Basil's, what does it take? And this is what you found in his journal, right? After, after his passing. Well, he'd, he'd shared it with a coach before, right? He shared with the coach before, yeah. yeah. So it says, what does it take? Go 110% at all times. Don't let your man score. Don't let your teammates man score. Win every sprint, every lane slide, everything. First one there, last one to leave. Be the most physical man on the court. Don't try to do it yourself. Always sprint back on defense. Dive for loose balls. Don't let up. Communicate on everything. Hold teammates accountable. And then in all caps, he's got kill opponent. And man, I'm telling you what, he's got it down here as, you know what I notice, coach? He doesn't say a thing about scoring. Right. And that's, it's so refreshing to to read that and be like, he's talking about, doing the dirty work and doing all these things all the way down to communicating on everything, which is, it's these skills that, it, I mean, it's a coach's dream coach and, and he is a coach's kid. So that doesn't surprise me, but uh, what a, what a powerful message coach. I, and I, I know it's, I know it's a tough, I know it's, it's tough and I, I'm just, it's very, I can't imagine coach, but it is, it is amazing. He was amazing, amazing young man. And yeah, from that list, you, you can see he cared about his teammates. It was never about him. It was never yeah. about him. He, he didn't care if he scored or not. He just – all he wanted to do is win, and that's what he prepared for. We, uh, yeah, and I think that a lot of people just want to win, but he's talking about doing it the right way, right? Yeah. He understood that. He understood what that what it took. I got a good story about him when, during um, COVID before this – before we were – able to play we were going over to indiana and playing in a little league he was a sophomore at the time and we were there playing and he didn't have a very good good game um he missed some missed some shots and that was you know and that was bothering him and, and he he realized that after that that missed shots don't don't matter and that's and that's kind of where this i think some of this list came from you know it was like it don't matter if you make or miss a shot or anything. It's, it's all the other stuff you do. And I to, on the way home, he was, he was sobbing. He was so upset with himself because he, because he worked so hard. And he's like, I work. And I, and I asked him, you know, and he wouldn't say anything for a long time. And finally I got, I got mad. I'm like, yeah, talk to me or I'm going to stop the car, you know, and we're going to yeah. figure this out. But uh, he's like, I just, I feel like I'm not getting any better. I practice all the time and I eat right. And I do this and I do that. You know, he was just, he was just heartbroken that he didn't play well, you know, on the offensive side of things. And I, I remember that like it's yesterday now and how heartbroken he was, but he never, he never quit. Went back in the next day, working hard, practicing hard and um, made himself into an all state basketball player. And that's, yeah. that's the, he never quit, right? He never, he never let that get him down. And he, he didn't, he didn't, that's that mental toughness part of it. Yeah. And coach, I see it. And, and, and here's what, if you can allow me to, to talk to you just a moment, like when you were talking about being like, you're like, I'm not very tough. I don't have any other option. Right. But I think that's what toughness is, right? I, I think sometimes we think toughness is we never get upset. We never cry. We never get uh, disappointed in ourselves. But toughness is, t- real toughness is 
having those moments and then getting back at it. Right. Getting back up. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the not quitting. It's that's to me, that's where the toughness comes in. It's, it's perfectly, it, I think it's necessary, not just acceptable to have those moments where we're like, oh, I suck and I'm not very tough and I'm not doing well. And being able to go, you know what? That's not what I want to be. I have to get up and I have to keep going. And that's, um, I see so much of that in what he's saying there and in what you're, in what you're trying to do now, coach. And just like, you just, you got to keep going, man. You got to keep going. And, yeah. And he taught me that too. Yeah. He taught me that too. Yeah. Coach, that was – thanks for sharing that the, that list. It's fantastic. Um, what else – I know that you had a list of things that you definitely wanted to talk about. What have we – What have we, anything we haven't hit that we need to talk about? Yeah, so I, I wanted to just talk a little bit about um, just who him and him and Drew were as, as – Yeah. And um, – You know they were they were all all state athletes, all star athletes. Um, Drew was a all conference football offense defense. He was all state first team uh, football player. Um, really good at at uh, pole vault. He was an all state pole vaulter. Uh, I think he got maybe third in state as a junior in pole vault. Um, so they you know he's he's all state in that. Um, couple times uh dylan same thing all state basketball player he was all conference football player he he didn't play as a junior or a sophomore he played as a freshman and then sophomore year there was football was whatever it was canceled till the spring yeah. and he, he did yeah. golf and was involved in other stuff that time and, and he enjoyed playing golf and with some friends and so he did that again as a junior and then he's like ah, i gotta go back to football and he was all conference uh, defensive back, all conference kicker. <laughs> Never kicked before in his life. Came home from one day from practice one day. He's like, well, I'm the kicker. I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, like I can kick decent. I no idea, right? He was just, uh, he was just, he, would, he could just put by, yeah. do about anything, right? Small schools, right? You got to find somebody, yeah. and you're an athlete. Right. So here like, you go. Hey, we're gonna see if you can kick <laughs> extra points today, and he yeah. was the best at it. So, <laughs> um, of course, all state. All state basketball on the first team, AP, IBCA. And then uh, he's he was all state track as a as a junior. Actually, as a sophomore too, he placed in state as a sophomore in high jump. Got uh, I don't know, top ten. I forget what, what he yeah. was eighth, ninth, maybe. And then uh, as a junior, he was top uh, eight in in uh, hurdles, and then he was runner up in high jump. Um, so he was, he was really, he was super good at high, high jump. He yeah. was so natural at it. He, um, his, his one and only meet he did as a senior, he, he went six, six and, um, beat the kid from, from Metamora who, who won state that, that year then. Um, so I, the coaches thought that because he's bigger, stronger, everything faster. He, they thought he'd probably get six nine or six ten this this past year, but never got that opportunity. Yeah, he was just he was very very special in that. And uh, Drew Drew the same way. He was gonna he was gonna do great things in pole vault this year. But both those boys <clears throat> were both so very humble. Um, that Don also had a journal of things that he wrote down um, verses from the Bible that we found in uh, two places he had written down James um, James 410 which is on my wristband yeah and uh, we have live like Dylan on the other side and then uh, for Drew we always talked about uh, he's corn fed he's just a he's just a big strong kid corn fed Christ led so um Anyway, uh, James 4.10 says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. Yeah. What a, what a, it's such a powerful, it's such a powerful verse. 
right? Because it, it's not, yeah, it's, our job is to humble ourselves, let, let, let the Lord lift you up and he's going to, right? But that's such a, and he did. Yeah. And he did. Yep. Um, So that was, that's kind of who they were. They, they played uh, JFL football together and the, the coach um, had a daughter that played and, and she was bigger. She was a lineman. And um, he told me after, sometime after the funeral, I, I don't remember um, when it was, that back when they played Dylan and Drew, um, like some of the people would make fun of his daughter for being being fat or overweight. He he said they they told everybody on the team that if you call her fat, we're gonna beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so that's their that's their heart. They were kind. They were kind yeah. people. They treated people right. Treated them with respect. Yeah, they're they're warriors. I, I you know there's. I, w- I wish I knew more stories about Drew and, and some of the things that he he did on the football field. But for for basketball, we played. Um, he was hurt at the end of football. He played the last couple of games with a sprained ankle, a high ankle sprain, and and um, he missed our first. I don't know five, six, seven games in, in basketball. His first game back was against Bloomington, and Bloomington had some talent. Um. We went down there and he, all right, he's going to play. We're like, all right, we're going to play like maybe five, seven minutes or whatever. I think he played 28 minutes that game, Drew did. And uh, he, he's just a, he was just a worried, you know, rebound defense. And that was a, that was an awesome game. We ended up winning, I think it was 96 to 87, just a track meet, not an overtime game. Mm-hmm. It was, it was an amazing game. Dylan had 33 points, I think, that game. Uh, we had a couple other guys in there in the 20s. Haverborn had, 27 and uh, Tyler Crow had 24 and then their team had three guys that scored in the 20s as well. It was, it was just a, it was a fun game to be a part of. But, um, yeah. That, that mental toughness side of Dylan came out. We played down in Monticello um, last year, regular season game. And he had a couple points early on and he looked like he's, he was, you know, feeling good and, and he dove for a loose ball, and he banged his head off the ground, and it split his eye open. And <clears> next thing you know, he's running over to their trainer, and he's sitting over there for like five minutes. I had no idea what was going on. I mean, my assistant coach to go down there and find out, and like, oh, they're stitching him up, or they're putting band. He has a cut on his head. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Um, finally, he came back in, um, and we weren't playing very well with him out. And he came back in, and, and uh, Ended up with twenty nine points and probably the he pretty much carried us that game on a, on a game that we didn't have our, our best and he did that in the biggest games um, yeah BCC for the conference championship Brad Underwood comes to watch Cole Serta yeah. play and it was a great game I think I mean, we were down we was back and forth and we were down late in the third by eleven I think it was and and um, he. He just turned on, so he's like, "No, nah, ain't happening today." He, he got so many rebounds, ended up with thirty-four points, and just Drew Fair made a couple big rebounds, and then yeah, uh, free throws at the end of that game. Um, he wasn't the best free throw shooter, but he made most of them in that one. Um, every time Dylan had a chance to play against a high-profile player, like play against Ty Pence down there at St. Yeah. Joe, and and uh, got the better of him, and and you know really really out outplayed him, and, and 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 Drew Fair was a big part of that game. Like his physicality, their coach even said it in the to the the uh, news because that guy's like Drew Fair is just tougher than everybody else. We we're not going to win if we can't play tougher. You know? Yeah. Um, but I think Dylan I can remember I can remember uh, Coach Underwood after that game was unbelievably impressed just with the environment and yeah. with the with with Dylan and and everything. Yeah, yeah, he was. He's been super nice to us about since then about things, and he he came and visited us during that week um, leading up to the funeral. Um, 
He's been yeah. He's a class act, and I hope they go far in the tournament. Oh, me too. Um, uh, and then we played East Saint East Peoria, and they had the kid that was going to Cal Poly, and I think Dylan held him the four points, and just just played outstanding. It's like every time he had a a challenge ahead of him, he he rose up and and just played outstanding. Yeah. What a it, it, what a very talented, humble kid, and just um, again your ability to to have some some things to share with others and and how to do things the right way is, you know, it's not the option you wanted, but it's the option that you're like you said that that you have to have to do. Yeah, he was a he he was just a. He's like an old soul, I guess you could say. Yeah. And, and um, one of one of the things he he would say to his teammates is like, you got to forget about the negatives. You always find the positives. And so we have a, we have a poster in our hallway now with with him and Drew's jerseys in it and, and quotes from them. And it's that stuff's on on the poster. Some of those things are, and it's it's just kind of cool. Our our kids, our players. I think they they um, appreciate that, and they they look at that as they go out. So that's that's one of the things on there. But I, I couldn't say that better myself. That's I mean that's it's what it's all about because it's always there. The positives are always there. They can be really really hard to find, but I don't think we have any. Like you said, we don't have any other option, right? Right. Right. Find the positives. Find the positives. Yeah. I'll go back to uh, to that um, picture I put on earlier of my coach hugging me, and this was uh, this was the picture at the end of our last game when we get beat by Plank in the sectional sectional finals. Huh. and he and he was the same number as you, right? Fourteen, same number as me, yeah. So it was, I guess I was meant to be his coach, I guess. As well. I feel yeah, that. Yeah. Meant, meant to do that. Yeah, that that's, that's a powerful side-by-side -side image, you know, the two pictures there. Yes, it is. Yeah. And it's. And that's just it, man. You always want to win the free throw. You always want to make the free throw. You always want to win the game. You always want to do everything you can, but it's not always going to go out and work out like you want it to. And you have to figure out how to deal with that. Right. We were and and in a positive way. We were going down to Champagne to watch watch the games and you know, he he worked he worked for me. I don't know if you knew that. He worked for me for a half a day before he went to school. Um we would Especially towards the end of the season, we'd watch so much basketball. We weren't getting all work done yeah. at the time, but yeah, some film and stuff. Um, but I was, I used, was used to having him with me a lot. Yeah, all morning and then oh, in the afternoon, yeah. and evening, yeah, and basketball stuff. There's a big, yep. silence, yeah, yeah, there's a big hole there. But I'm sure driving down well, to the state tournament game, I. Finally, started talking about the Pontiac game. I was like, "Are you, you know, what do you think about it? How do you feel about it? What do you, what are your thoughts?" You like, like I'm okay. It's just a game. Yeah, I'm like, man, I'm more devastated than he yeah, is. And, yeah. Um, but he, I think he was just comfortable and knew that he had he had given everything he had. And, yeah, and and all the players did. They 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 really. They really did. They gave it everything they had. It just didn't end up like we wanted, and maybe there was a reason for that. Getting that hug maybe was a reason for that. That's something I'll yeah, I'll treasure. Remember that rest I, of my life. Yes, you would anyway, but especially now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coach, um, any last any last thoughts here? Anything you want to leave us with? Um, I 
Yeah. Um, you know, we, as coaches, a lot of times, and, I, and I'll fault myself on this too, when, when I first um, started coaching, we, we we did a prayer. The, the coach I was under for one year would pray before before game, and um, the first year I I then took on as a as a coach. Um, boy, this isn't going to work here. I'll make it go. Um, we had a we had a kid Connor Hobb who always asked to pray before games. Mm-hmm. And so he did it, and I loved it. And I always did it when we were, kids were younger, playing all the junior stuff, um, fifth and sixth grade ball. We always prayed before every game. And now, like that's frowned upon in schools, yeah. and it's like you can't do that. And so my my athletic director's like, you can't you can't do that before games unless it's a player led thing or something, and then it's fine. And I and that's one thing I regret. I wish I would have kept doing that. Um, but I'll never forget, like the last after our last game when when we when we lost to Pontiac, I I told all the players three things that I wish for them, and one one was to you know find a do a do a job, uh, have a career that they they love to do, so it, so that they doesn't feel like work. The other one was to find true love. Marry someone that loves them, and then the other was to have a relationship with Christ, and and that was the last things I said to our our team as a team. I wish it had been more of the first things I said, um, hmm. but I felt strong about about doing that. And then our our awards banquet, a couple of days before the boys left to go on their spring break, we the pastor from the Baptist church said a prayer at the sports banquet, and I just hope that those things can continue and become more um, happen more in, 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 in sports that we can bring Christ into it. I think it's so, so important. Um, you know, they, love, they, they don't want to do it at public schools, but you can at private schools. So what, you know, what's the difference? Yeah. Um, I want to share this picture. This is a, something that's given us hope. This was a sunset on the edge of February. The first sunset after the Drew and Dylan passed away. And there's a, I don't know if I, my uh, cursor's on there or not, but there's like a, a cross that happened in the mm. sky created by a telephone pole and, and the clouds. Yeah. And some people say it looks like there's two boys sitting on the edge of the sun. And then right here is the the face of my son Dylan in the clouds. Yeah. So sunsets, sunrises, the sky definitely means more than yeah than ever before. But I just I hope people can realize when when things are tough, when things are hard. That You, you got to go to Christ first, and that's the only way to yeah. get through every day. And, and that's just um, that's something I want to leave. It's like, yeah, I, I, you got to have Christ in your life yeah, to get through I, the I hard agree. times, and <sighs> it sure helps. Well, it's it's the answer, but it, it you know it helps getting through all this stuff that's, that is going to happen. But coach, I I can't thank you enough for coming on and I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I'm going to prop you up a little bit here. When you talk about when people say, well, you're the toughest person I know and you don't buy it. Your decision to come on here today to do this on this date, just because it's, you know, just because you're emotional and it's hard doesn't mean you're not tough because that's, to me, that's what it is. Right. And to find the positives in this and to, and to, sh- and to share it with others to help them. That's, 
I agree with others. You're you're one of the toughest guys I know. I can tell you that. And I know it doesn't feel like it to you, but uh, no, it doesn't. But I know. Again, whatever you're going through, but people told me you gotta keep going. Yeah. Yep. So I try to live, you know, live for live for my family, live for Trey, live the way Dylan would want want me to live, and man, I, and I, I think he's had that effect. On a lot of a lot of people around around here, I was overwhelmed by how his story influenced and affected the the girls at Peoria Notre Dame and what a great bunch of young women they are and their their fans. Yeah. that was so humbling. I walked away from that knowing that it it helped me talking talking to them. I can't believe it helped them, but I know it helped me. I, it, this conversation here is going to help people coach. That's, that's the, that's, that's what I wanted. I hope we honored that. I hope we honored that for you. I hope we honored Dylan. I hope we honored Drew in this conversation. I hope so too. Yeah. I hope so too. Yeah. And There's honestly, they made it easy. Happened, they, uh, yeah. The day that Dylan passed away, we had a, had a nephew that had a baby that same day and uh, on the back of his head, he was born a few hours after Dylan passed away on the back of his head, is the, they call an angel's kiss. And it's the, uh, two little lip marks on the back of his head. Yeah. I don't know if it's lip marks from Dylan or his name's Noah. Noah had a grandma that he never met that passed away too couple of years back but someone gave him a little kiss on the back of his yeah. head. it's the so signs power, are there coach power it's, in God, yeah there's power in christ there's power in belief and hope yep yeah, that's coach <laughs> yep thanks for coming on i appreciate you sharing the story and uh yeah thanks for thank you me do it you oh please i i appreciate it thank you very much you're welcome. Wish your son the best too. I know. Oh, thank you, thank you. And 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 a Trey and a, and I'm a Milliken guy, so I'll even say to Trey, I wish him. You know, so well, I'll, it it's the best I can do. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> yep. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Metal is a person's ability to face adversity in a spirited and resilient manner. It is a great skill to have for athletics and for life, but it is not something we are born with. If you want it, you have to forge your metal. And if you listen to the Mental Metal Podcast, you already know that, but not everybody else does yet. So help me out by ordering and wearing some sweet The Mental Metal Podcast gear. We've got short sleeve tees, long sleeve tees, and some super comfortable hoodies. Order online today and you can have your gear in no time. But the best part is that every order helps support the show and helps me spread the message that mental toughness is a trait that can and should be built. So find the link in the show notes, order your gear, and start showing that you know how to forge your metal. Parents of athletes know that confidence and belief are fundamental for success. We want them to play without fear and without anxiety, but once those negative thoughts take over, it can derail years of work. Turning that anxiety into belief is similar to building strength and speed. It just takes intentional effort over time. Mental Metal Coaching provides the individual drills needed to build the positive mindset necessary for success on the court and in life. Contact today to schedule a free coaching session and start building mental toughness in your athlete. We play to win the game. <clears throat> we want to win. We want to do our best. We want things to go our way. We want to make the free throw. We want to win the state championship. We want things to go well. We want, we never want bad things to happen to our family, our loved ones. We never want these things to happen. And we do our best to make sure they don't happen. We, we practice to win the game. We practice to win the make the free throw. We, we hold our loved ones close and we, and we care for them and we love them and we do all these things and, and we, we try not to get sick and we try not to get hurt and we try to do our best and we try to keep our job. We try to do all these things, but regardless of how 
hard we try, things happen. We lose games. We lose jobs. We lose loved ones. It's going to happen. It's part of life. It's the way it works. The trick with life is being able to figure out how to deal with that. Uh, we all have difficult situations. Um, I, I've been through some things and I can tell you just the things that I know I've been through feel they pale in comparison to what Coach Basil deals with on a daily basis with the loss of his son. And uh, I, I commend him for coming on. I, f I feel for him and I mean it. Uh, the decision he made to come and do this interview on that date was uh, one of the toughest things I've ever experienced. And uh, knowing that it was going to be uncomfortable, it was going to be emotional, but he did it because he knew it was going to help somebody. And how you have to just keep trying. You have to like, and there was some stuff in there he talked about early on about, hey, I, I don't have any other option. I got to I gotta keep going. I got to keep doing things for my family. I have to keep doing these things. And I feel like um, I feel like a lot of people feel that way. A lot of guys feel that way. It's they, We get in tough situations and feel like I just have to do it. I have to do it. I have to do it. And I think that there's lessons to be learned from from Coach Basil here and that he's he's putting his faith in Christ trying to find the positives in, in the situation, trying to share that with others. And honestly, coming to talk to people like me and talking to other teams, knowing that you're helping them, but also knowing that by talking about it, it it's being, it's very therapeutic for him. And, uh, there, there's just a lot, a lot there. Um, a lot to, um, a lot to watch and a lot to see and just a lot to exam you know, an example to follow, uh, how to, how to trust in Christ, how to do what's best for you and how to just keep going. Uh, it's a, it was a difficult conversation. It was a difficult podcast and I hope that we honored coach Basil. Hope that we honored Dylan Basil. Hope that we honored Drew Fair in that podcast and hopefully you can learn to take some things from it regardless of your situation uh, if you're a coach um, or an athlete and you're watching this and listen check out those those rules that that Dylan had uh, for a for a 17 year old to write those rules to be a good teammate and be a good player is I mean he was he was mature beyond his his years uh, and just a great way to look at how to play sports. Um, and if you're just listening to this, to be listening to it, uh, and you've been through some hard things and that's why you're listening to it, then take, uh, take some advice from coach Basil on how to deal with this stuff. Um, be willing to find the positives, share those positives with people and, and be in a, you know, be an example for others to follow and others to see. Um, it's a very, a lot of courage from coach Basil there a lot of toughness I know he doesn't feel like it but I'm extremely impressed with the way he was able to come on talk about it and the way he's handled the entire situation so huh. tough episode but it's I think there's something to be learned from it um, and we can always find the mess we can always find positives in the mess of life and uh, they're there but you have to be looking for them you have to be paying attention just like, uh, and, and just how powerful that, that Dylan would say that Dylan would say, don't focus on the negatives. Always find the positives. Uh, what a great, what a great thing for a kid to be able to say. And, and then now that we're using his, you know, his words and his story to help others, it's a powerful, powerful idea. And I am just happy to be able to, tell that story so hopefully it helps you as always i appreciate you listening please remember to like and share the podcast so others can hear these messages too and uh i appreciate i appreciate the support i appreciate the listening as always this has been the mental model podcast i'm your coach matt Tillman, and remember to forge your metal and always believe
Thanks again for listening to The Mental Metal Podcast, produced by Caraggio Media, sponsored by Quick Cut, a video management platform for every level of play, and by Mental Metal Coaching, helping athletes learn to face adversity in a spirited and resilient way. The Mental Metal Podcast is created each week to help players develop more mental toughness, and that is something that will help all of us. So help me out and like and share the Mental Metal Podcast with your friends. Until next time, keep forging your metal.